history. Admitted, intercerebral hemorrhage, secondary to metastatic disease. The criteria for the neurological diagnosis of brain death has been fulfilled based on two examinations, six hours apart, by Dr. Michael King, neurologist, and Dr. Rick Bauer. Shock not present, coma panel negative, absence of cerebral respiratory and cardiac functions. Respirations and cardiac functions are mechanically maintained. Confirmation of the clinical diagnosis of brain death was documented by EEG and brain scan. He's getting the best possible care, Dad. We're doing everything we can. She has positive spinal reflexes. We're continuing life support. You don't have to do that, Rick. We both know you can have positive spinal reflexes and have a neurological diagnosis of brain death. We both know it's too late. Lecture, is it true we heard Nothing is clear yet, Alex. You have no right to be here, either one of you. We both care deeply about oh, Roger. You're a liar, Alan. You hated Roger. Now you both come swooping in here like the vultures you are. Oh, Holly, I was his ex-wife, too. And quite frankly, I think I treated him far better than you ever thought of. An extensive and ongoing search for Mr. Thorpe is being led by Detective Levy of the Springfield PD. Oh, dear. What'd you do, spill the coffee? Mm, a little bit. Wow, I'm so freaked out over Roger. Poor guy. One minute he's a birthday party for his grandson, the next minute they're dragging the river for him. Life. <laughs> it's a bunch of surprises, isn't it? Morning, all. Good morning, Dinah. How'd you sleep? Like a baby, thank oh, you. Oh, mm -hmm. speaking of, come on, Pop. Let's go see your grandson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pepe, Looks like I'm taking the last cup. <laughs> oh, well. Milk, milk. Where's the milk? Why'd you do it? Guess I'm gonna have to drink it black, huh? Why'd you bring my father to Springfield? What do you get out of it, Dinah? You know, you surprised me, Matt. I thought you'd be tickled pink to see your papa after, what, ten years, has it been? I also thought that, uh, Mommy needs to see your family, get to know them. Something wrong? Did I upset you? This portion of Guiding Light is presented by Pampers Trainers Ultra Training Pants. Pampers Trainers Ultra and you, all they need to succeed. You are a bully, that's what you are, and a stupid, unimaginative bully at that. I mean, shoving me into the bathtub was one thing, but this, this is, this is positively boorish. Yeah, well, I may be boorish and a bully, but at least I don't go around trying to manipulate people. Oh, don't make me laugh. See, you don't give a damn who you hurt, do you? First you poisoned Bill against his own mother, now you're coming after my family. Never mind about what I had to deal with my own, with my own man when I was a kid. None of that matters to you, none of that counts. No, you don't count, that's for sure. You know, you brought my father to Springfield out of spite, pure and simple. 
I happen to like Sean. I think he's a delightful man. Now, if the two of you have bad blood or something, or any other little secrets creeping out of your closet, then I think it's about time that Vanessa learns the truth before she marries you. Give it up, Dinah. Oh, what? You don't think she has a right to know? You know, you are so transparent, it's a joke. You want to break your mother and me up so bad you can taste it, can't you? Oh, all I can taste is sour grape. I've never Thank met anybody so narcissistic in my whole life. It's all about Dinah. A poor, sad little story that promises to have a lousy ending. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to marry your mother. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Oh, yeah? Well, you're not married to her yet. Ro Roger? Please, this, this can't be true. You hypocrite. You trapped him. I did nothing of the... You tried to destroy his relationship with me. Is that what you call treating Listen, him my better? my dear woman. I'm not you your dear anything. Ladies, now get out ladies, of here. This is not helping please. anything. Their leaving here would help me a lot. Look, this is tragic news. And you and Alexander are shaken by it. It's understandable. You don't fool me for a second. You are delighted Roger was in an accident. You've just come here to make sure it's true. Holly, well, you can stop salivating because he's not dead yet. You know, you don't have to let her talk to you. Like well, Holly was just saying what she feels, and she's right. Roger and I are adversaries. Adversaries, are you? All right, enemies. But even enemies respect each other. And I hope, I sincerely hope, that he's found soon and that he's alive. Wait a minute, you're giving up the search? Oh, uh, look, I know how you feel. No, you don't. You don't give a damn about my father, but he is out there and he is hurt and he needs our help. Look, we've had men and dogs out all night and early this morning. We have searched the wreck site, we have combed the woods all the way to the back of here, we have dragged the river, and there is no trace of the body of your father anywhere. Levy, I want you to keep the search going a couple more hours. Look, uh, no disrespect, Ross, but uh, you're not the DA anymore. Come on, for the women's sake, just a little longer. Okay, two hours. You're a good man, Levy. Listen up. We're going back out. I'm going. Uh, Ross, if you tell me to go home. You have been out all night. I, 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 I'm going to be here when he... He gets here. When they find him, he's going to need me. I think it would be a better idea if you went home, got some rest, and I'll call you the minute anything happens, all right? I'm not leaving. Alec, let it go. Don't cause any trouble. Come on. Let me take you home. No, what? Uh, Roger is my daughter's father. We're the only family that he has. I feel a responsibility to see this through. Right, I'll check out a couple more hours. Levy, you don't think there's a chance that he could survive in the crash, do you? Uh, look, Mr. Spaulding, I can understand how the family's having a hard time accepting this, but there's no way that Mr. Thorpe could have survived. But if there's no body, then there's a chance. The impact probably threw the body out of the car and into the river, which means that it is miles away by now. I wouldn't keep Eve on life support, Dad, if there wasn't a chance we could save her. If there were even the slightest chance that she would live, that she'd come back to me, I'd do anything. When she's gone, the heart and the soul and the laughter of the woman I love is gone. No. We don't know that, Dad, not for sure. That's not her heart. She's alive up there. Because a machine is breathing for her. Because a machine is pumping blood through her veins. I mean, she was gone when they brought her in last night. No brain function. There was no chance of recovery. I, 
don't understand why they did this to her. The, st the staff, Dad, they... They did everything humanly possible. They're devastated. But why did they feel that they had to fight this stupid battle? I mean, it's just such a pointless, meaningless gesture. Why didn't they just let her go? Dad, that's not their decision to make. And now sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. I mean, I walk around this building, and inside I'm just screaming. Where is she? I'm screaming, where's my beautiful Eve? I'm sorry. And I don't understand why we couldn't make her better. Why couldn't we make her better? She wouldn't let us. She wouldn't let us help her. Where is my little sweetie pie? Bob. Kirk, no. No, come on, come on. Just, just give me another chance, all right? Yeah, why? Because I deserve it. Look, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm really sorry. I should have told you about Peter. I know that. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I only did it because I liked you. That's... Kirk, come on. I, all I'm asking for is... Look, all I need is... How could this happen? But Springfield's weather can be summed up in two words. High pressure, which... Come on, come on, the news. But it should burn off in an hour or so, leaving us a gorgeous day. So enjoy it. Damn it. Turning to the local news. What's up with you and Roger that you'd be we so have upset? An update on Shut that up. apparently fatal single car accident involving noted hey. Springfield businessman Roger Thorpe. The police have been unable to find Mr. Thorpe's body and are continuing their efforts to drag the nearby Springfield River. They ask that citizens stay well clear of the dragging operations. I didn't know you and Roger were so close. He's the only one who's been nice to me in this whole time. Matt? Okay. Hi. What's wrong? Uh, bad news. Talking about the Roger Thorpe incident? No, no, I don't. It's not. It's it's Eve. Eve. Eve Guthrie. I'm sorry. I know you tried. I mean, I know we all no, tried. Don't say that. Don't don't say that. You have nothing to be sorry for. It's just. It's just a part of life. You know, last night we were spending a lot of time talking about stuff as if everything were normal. We were talking about what we wanted, what we loved, and that sort of stuff. You know why I wasn't there? I mean, why I wasn't with her? Because I'd gone out to get her ice cream. And everything was looking good. I mean, we got the news about the medication and being improved and, and the testing and things were looking as hopeful as they could possibly. It was a complication of her illness, Dad, that caused a cerebral hemorrhage. You know, sometimes these things, they just happen. It's, we have no control. She looked so beautiful when I left. When I walked out that door, she was laughing at me, and she was making fun of me the way she always used to do. Dad, something like this, there would have been no warning. It just hit her. I don't know what to do now. I feel like I should be doing something. I feel like I should be helping her. I feel like I should be holding her. I, I don't understand why I can't hold her. And this is so stupid. I should be talking to Lillian and saying how Michelle is. Michelle's fine, Dad. She's fine. I called downstairs. She's sleeping. She's okay. 
she was alone in the house, you know, when, when Eve collapsed. Michelle's a real strong kid, Dad. But she loved Eve, and she, sh she shouldn't have to go through something like this. Do you know, you know what Michelle said when she got to the hospital, Dad? She wanted to know how you were doing. She's worried about you, and so am I. I just want you to get some sleep. I tell you what I need is just to be alone for a little while. Just a little while. I'd really feel better if you just lie down. Get some rest. Please do what I'm asking you to do, son. I need to try to think. Have you heard anything more? Alan. <laughs> well, what is it? What's so bloody funny? Uh, nothing. I was just reading the headlines here, and it got me to thinking about what Roger's obituary would say. I'm right morbid thought. I can see it now. Roger Thorpe, a man hated by one and all, young and old, rich and poor. Oh, <laughs> Alex, I wonder, I wonder if we'll be invited to the funeral. Maybe we'll be asked to speak. What would we say? No. Alex, you're smiling. Uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> Thank heavens, I was beginning to worry that you were going to start wearing widow's weeds. Come on, I can't imagine you speaking at Roger's memorial. Oh, I would be positively eloquent. I would recall fondly the man I was proud to call my nemesis. I'll recall the time that I pretended to be an Asian businessman, Tashiwa, and locked him in the reptile house of the zoo. I guess still hear Roger saying, Let me out of here, Mr. Tashiwa, and I will help you destroy Alan Spaulding. Oh, God. Oh, I could probably recount the time I drove past Holly's house and watched her throw Roger and his clothes right out in the snow. I said, enjoy. <laughs> and then the look on his face when he found out I wasn't dying. <laughs> he'd been set up. <laughs> yeah. I can't speak to this. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. <laughs> Sort of surprised to see the two of you here. Well, are you all right? Oh, yes, darling. Mm -hmm. This must have come as a real shock to you. I'm sorry. Oh. What's going on with you? Okay, but look, if if Levy is right and the body was thrown clear of the car into the water. Yeah, right, sure, Fletch. Uh, you don't think that's what happened? When it comes to Roger, I'm a natural born skeptic. What do you mean, Ross? Well, what a surprise, Leo. Ross, Fletcher, uh, I, I, I assume uh, Holly is here? Yes. How's she holding up? <sighs> okay, Leo, what gives? Ross, it's unbelievable. When I heard the news, I was literally stunned. I, 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 I couldn't move. That's really stunned. It's unbelievable. I agree with that. Uh, Ross, phone call for you is Dr. Rick Bauer. He says it's very important. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. Yeah, Rick, what is it? Are you all right? No, but everybody else seems to be. I wonder, am I going to be the only person that grieves if he dies? Oh, honey, don't talk that way. We can't give up hope. We? <laughs> we? Oh, my place. Come on, you've got Fletcher. You don't give a damn about Daddy. If you loved Daddy the way that he loves you, if you had married him, oh. if, you, if you had given him the attention and the love that you're giving Fletcher... Oh, honey, please don't say that. He Lord. wouldn't have been out on the road last night. He would be here with us. Please, please don't. I didn't know this would happen. Holly. I see the look in her eyes. Oh, listen, I... listen, Holly, Blake does not mean everything she says. She is just angry and afraid. Maybe she's right. Maybe it's my fault because I... It isn't. You are not to blame for a single thing. Now, come on, let's go. Go? I yes, I'm go. taking you home. 
No, it's... Yes. You're not doing Roger any good staying here, and you're certainly not doing yourself one damn bit of good. You're exhausted. You need some rest, so come on. Wait, now, Holly, before you go... Uh, Alexandra, just don't start. Well, I would like to simply convey my deepest sympathies, my condolences to Holly's and Roger's families. I realize what you're going through, Holly, and I think you're being very brave about the whole thing, honestly. And you're a good man, Fletcher. Oh, Alexandra. Well, you are. Come on. Let me get you a cup of java. Oh. Tanji, I'm surprised that uh, Fletcher had you write this article. It was my decision. Must have been very difficult. Well, work was really the only thing that kept me sane last night. I really don't know what's keeping me so sane this morning. I mean, the police have pretty much given up hope. You know, I'm really concerned about how Fletcher's going to get through this whole thing. Why? Sounds like he's a big fan of Rogers. Oh. Fletcher's going to be fine. Well, I'm not talking about... I'm talking about the fact that Holly's acting like he's, she's madly in love with Roger right in front of him. Like I said, don't worry about Fletcher. To the hospital? Yes. Uh, Rick wants me there right away. Apparently Ed needs me. Okay, um... You should go. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, I just want to be here when they find my dad. All right. Oh, um. He's in a coma? Yeah, she's on life support. Well, I mean, if she, if they think she's going to come out of it, though, right? No. No, they don't. I've got to go to Uncle Ed. Bridget, Bridget, wait. What? We can't go. Why? Ed doesn't want anybody at the hospital, at least for a couple of hours. Why? I don't know why, but that's what Lillian said. No, I'm not, gonna, was... I'm not going to let Uncle Ed go through this alone. Someone He's has to be not alone. Him. He's got Rick with him, okay? Oh, all right. Well, what about Michelle? Where's Michelle? Who's got Michelle? Is she okay? Michelle's at the hospital, and Lillian's taking care of her. Okay. Uncle, it's like a father to me. I can't just stand here and do nothing. Come here. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm so sorry. But that's what we have to do. We have to just wait. Ed. Poor Ed. I sure wish there was something I could do. What are you talking about? You didn't even come to Maureen, your own sister's funeral. What the hell good would you do Ed now? Could we not do this? Could we not fight about this right now? It's really strange. I feel just like her now. I feel my heart is dead, but I'm still alive. But not really alive. All of my hopes and dreams and all that stuff, that's still alive. And the only thing that's missing is my little Eve. But she was my heart. And now she's gone. And she didn't want to die like this. Like what, Ed? 
she wanted a living will. She even tried to talk me into it a couple of weeks ago. Did you say no? I thought it would give her negative thoughts. I was in complete denial. So what is it that Eve did want? She wanted to die naturally. She wanted to die with dignity and no undue suffering. So life support. She was didn't never... want it. Okay. She didn't want it. She did not want to be kept alive artificially. I know this is difficult for you. But it's important. If Eve does have a living will, then the hospital had no right to put her on life support and go against her wishes. I mean, that is, if they knew about the will. The only reason she didn't have it was because of me. Because I got so angry at her whenever she even wanted to talk about it. I'm a doctor. I just, how, how could I do that to her? Well, you weren't acting like a doctor then. You were acting like a man. He's trying to keep the spirits up of the woman he loved. Her spirits were fine. I was the one who couldn't face it. I was the coward. It would have been so much more loving to let her do what she wanted to do. But can't do that now. Because her body is being kept alive, her mind and her spirit are dead. And her soul is waiting to be free. Why did Dinah run off like that? It's, it's, what's wrong with her? She'll be okay. Sit down. I'm worried about you. Why? I'm okay. I don't think you are. I think you're hiding it, but I think this thing with Eve is taking its toll on you. I know you've been real close with my Uncle Ed for a long time. Well, I saw him at the hospital this morning. He, uh... Um, he looked terrible. I really don't like to think of him going through this after what he went through with Maureen. Oh, uh, you know what? I should probably get to the office. They can do without you for one day, don't you think? I know they can, but I can't. I feel as if I should get to work. At I don't end. think you should go. Well, actually, there's something very specific I have to take care of. Look, I, I know you feel like you have to be a rock for everyone, but what's important right now is for you to take care of yourself. I'm fine. No. You don't have to be strong for me. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. I know. I know. Papa, I, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings with what I said before. Before? Uh, what did you say? Well, about how Uncle Ed's like a second father to me. You know, I only said that because he took me in when my life was really a mess and, you know, helped me and stuff. Well, he's a good man. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I'd love you any less. I didn't take it personally, Bridget. What I'm worried about now is Matthew. He's got all this anger inside him. And he's got. Mm. Now, how am I going to get around that? Or maybe I should just bust right through it. I don't know what to do. How can I convince him that what's happened in the past should be forgotten and that he should accept me as his dad? We're blood. Uh, you okay, Vanessa? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just on the way to the office. See you later. Okay. Call me later. I'll let you know if I hear anything at all. Okay, okay. yeah, I'll give you a call. Yeah. All right. Okay, bye. See ya. There's a little, uh, uh, you don't mind if I tag along? No. Oh, there's a little matter that I'd like to discuss with you. Alan, we've done our duty, more than our duty. Let's leave. We want to leave now? Yes. 
Alice, we're not going to hear anything more about Roger today. Besides, my face aches from elongating it. No, Alex, I can't leave now. Well, why not? I want to stay and see if there's anything I can do for Tangie. Oh, yes, Tangie, of course. How could I forget? Look, you just go ahead without me. Alan, it's really hard to believe you're such a glutton for punishment. You know, they stay here and wear sackcloth and ashes for Tangie's benefit and go to the country club to have a nice dinner and celebrate Roger's demise. And that is exactly what you'd like to do, isn't it? Not until the body is dead and buried. Oh, here she comes. Alan, I uh, just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate you coming by. Nick and I, we're going to stay and make sure that Blake's all right. Sure. Uh, uh, and then? Oh, and, and then we have to go back to the journal. Okay, well, in that case, Alex and I'll go home, but I'll uh, be okay, talking with you uh, soon. Okay, let's pack up the gear and move out. What, what happened? Did you find him? No, no, we struck out. Look, we dragged the river twice. We checked every inch of the accident site. There's nothing more we can do. Well, well no, you're not giving up. I'm calling off the search up here, but we're going to notify the towns downriver just in case Rogers... Look, Blake, I'm sorry. Okay, go home. Get some rest. Let's rock and roll, everybody. Listen, why don't we go outside and get some fresh air, okay? Come on. Well, I guess the celebration is in order, but... I don't really feel much like celebrating. No. No, neither do I. What? Oh. Getting information out of our beloved police department is like pulling teeth. What did they Got say? I an editorial on them. Hmm? What did they say? Nothing, nothing. Not a word? No reported... Sightings, no one matching Roger's description admitted to any of the area hospitals. Where do you think you're going? To the journal. Any information is going to come in there. Uh-uh. Only place you're going Fletcher. is right here on this couch. Now, come no, on, don't argue wait. with me. Come There's on. a limit to how far a person can go on nerves and adrenaline alone, and you're already way past that. Don't manage me. I am not going to rest until I figure out what's going... I, I, yeah, it's awful. I don't mean to take it out on you. You've been so understanding all night and everything. I'm, I'm wired. I am. That, that's my excuse. You don't need any excuses. And you certainly don't need to apologize to me. What's happened to my legs? <laughs> Lost control. You're right. You could be right. Could be? Mm. Me? I'm always right. You admitting I'm right, that's a first. I need my second win. Uh, yeah, well, that'll happen maybe in several hours from now. So, look, mm -hmm. in the meantime, come on, take those legs, stretch them out, elevate them. And just try to get some rest, okay, huh? And I'll stay here with you if you want me to. Mm -hmm. I would like you to stay with me. But if you would go to the journal, then you could call me as soon as you found out anything. Yeah, sure, I certainly will. What? I am sick of you banging around here like you're mad at the world, and you won't even answer me when I talk to you. I answered you. No, you didn't. You grunted and you slammed some stuff. What's wrong? What's going on? Is it Eve? No, Bridget, it's you. You jump every time the old man calls your name. I'm trying to make the guy comfortable. He's our father. I know who he is. Look, it's his, this is his house as much as it is ours. What, are you taking his side now? There aren't sides. Bridget, you think... Kissing up to him for a few days is going to make up for the past, the way he treated me, you, Mom. I really hate when you get like this. You were so judgmental. What, you're you saying not... I shouldn't judge, Pop? No, I'm saying I don't like the way you're judging him. I don't like the way you're judging me. I see you the way that you look at me when Kirk's around. I mean, you're, like, so critical, I can't even believe it. You're worse than Pop is, no, Bridget, you know that? I'm sorry about that. I'm not trying to be critical. It's just I want to see you happy. Well, That's... you have a strange way of showing it. Look, it's just a lot's going on lately. I mean, everything that's been happening with Eve and now this and now Pop, it's just... Sorry I jumped on you, okay? I, I, did, I didn't mean to do that. What is it? What else is going on? 
Well, uh, yeah, I think that'll be fine, Hassan. That'll work. Yeah. Okay, I'll get back to you about it. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. I just, uh, oh boy, everything's been at sixes and sevens and zero around here since, since my ex-brother. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I think that you'd be interested in my family situation. What is it you wanted to, to talk to me about? I, I want you to know that I'm uh, very interested in everything about your family. Seeing how it's pretty soon, it's going to be my family as well. Uh, I'm real, real glad about that. <laughs> Matt's changed since he came to Springfield. Changed for the better. And uh, I think there, we have you to thank for that. You're responsible. I don't know how you can say that. I mean, you haven't even spoken to Matt for the last ten years, right? That's an exaggeration. That's not true. But, uh... It is true that he is damn angry with me. That's no exaggeration. I love my son. I, uh, I love him a lot. And that's why I wanted us to talk. I wanted to know if that you would help me win back my son's love. Will you do that? Well, I... I... Of course, I'll do anything I can. Um, if anybody knows how difficult things can be between a parent and a child, it's me. I'd be very grateful to you. Oh. Yes, um, sure. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I, I have to call Lillian, because I want to get back to the hospital, and I, I'm going to ask Matt to meet me there. Would you, would you like to come with us? No, I don't want to impose on Ed. He's been, he's been going through enough already. You just give him my sincerest condolences. Thank you. Hey, look, Pop's not going to be around forever. You know? Yeah, I, I know. Well, uh, Matt, may, maybe he does really love us. I mean, maybe he really is going to try to be a father to us this time. Yeah, well, one thing's for sure. We're all going to need each other. Uncle Ed's going to need our support. I can't believe this is happening to him again. <laughs> I just don't, I don't get it. You know, he's such a loving man. You don't give up hope, all right? Oh, never. Right, listen, I think that we should still drop you off at home before we go to the office. Nick, I'm staying here. I will be here when I find my father, okay? Okay. Thanks. Bye. Oh, honey, can I fix you something to eat? Oh, thanks, but no thanks, Doris. Why are you here? 